Welcome back to yet another episode of Silvered Pin Masterclass. In today's episode, we are going to check out some of the pending brand settings. We have presets tab here, we have profile tab and some other settings as well. As you can see here in my screen, this is a different plate compared to the last few tutorials. So if you go into the properties of paint node, I have made few tutorials which explains all these brushes in a very detailed way. If you guys missed those videos, please check out my channel. It's going to be very informative. So let's see what all we have inside profile settings. So I'm going to select color brush and the shortcut for that is shift C. So here we have the brush in my viewer. Inside the profile tab, we can see there is a small window here which shows the exact brush we have in the viewer. Size is just the size of the brush. If I increase the size in the viewer itself, we can see the brush is larger than the previous value. So opacity is controlling the opacity of the brush. That means if I'm keeping it as 100 and painting, you can see this is very opaque. If I am reducing the opacity, that means I'm reducing the transparency. And you can see the transparency right over here. Keep in mind that this is going to be very useful when you paint. Softness controls the softness of the brush. If you increase the softness, it's like a very soft mat. And if you are decreasing the value like 2.5, the edge is very hard. And the next one is fall off. It just controls the feather value. You can see the difference right over here. And uh, I'm going to keep this as a default. You can explore that when you work. Up next, we have flatness. And this property can be used to determine the flatness of the brush. If I'm going to increase the value, you can see my brush is very flat now. I can keep this as 98 and we have a sharp line kind of stroke here. Maybe some cases it's going to be super useful or else you can keep this as zero. We can tweak the angle as well. So suppose I want something like this and you can see uh, we can tweak the angle up to 360 degree and we have spacing. Spacing determines the spacing of the brush stroke. Uh, you can definitely explore all these properties while you work or while you practice. And as I just mentioned, we have a small window here which shows the look of the brush when we tweak these properties. We have two different brushes here like circle brush and square brush. So square is just square. <laughs> So I'm going to keep this back to circle. Maybe I'm going to keep this all as default. Maybe increase the size a bit so that I can show you what airbrush does. So if I right click on my mouse and just hold, I cannot see any difference unless I move the mouse a bit. But if I turn on this airbrush or check this airbrush button, see if I right click and hold the stroke, you can see the difference. The stroke just fills out gradually inside the brush window. So this is all about airbrush. I'm not sure where we can use this, but you can be aware of the settings for sure. Up next, we have another option build up. So I'm not sure what this does properly. You can definitely refer the user guide for knowing what is this or if you are already using this tool, please let me know in the comment so that I can learn too. So this is all about profile settings and uh, here we have controls for different channels. That means we can paint in different channels as well. Right now we are painting inside red, green, blue channel simultaneously. Let's suppose if I want to paint inside the R channel, I can select R. Let's draw here. If I go into the green channel, you can see there is no stroke painted here in the blue channel as well. But if you check the red channel, you can see there's a stroke. So we just painted in the red channel alone. And also we have alpha tabs. So if you want to paint in the RGB channels as well as the alpha channel, you can turn on RGB as well as alpha. You cannot turn on RGB or alpha. It's just like any of these individual channels or collective of all this channel like RGB and alpha. So I'm going to turn this off. So here we have three buttons, normal color details. And there is a slider which controls the value of these options. And uh, there is another option here as well. So I'm going to explain what is this. So if you go into the color layer, you can see here we are just seeing the color values in this plate. And if you go into the detail layer, you can see this is the detail layer. We can see the strokes as well. So basically, what is this? This option is very similar to frequency separation painting technique inside Nuke. That means we can paint inside the color layer or we can paint inside the detail layer separately. You don't have to take multiple nodes for doing that. So going back to the output node and uh, let's turn on the color button and uh, take clone tool, reduce the brush size. Let's paint right over here. So here you can see I'm just painting in the color layer. Still, I can see the details of the tree here. That means my paint strokes are affecting only the color layer. So if I'm keeping detail and uh, now if I'm painting, let's see, see, 
it just affects the detail that means all the color values are still unchanged here only the details are been cloned here yeah this is going to be very useful and this is the level of detail or color which we want to use for cloning and there is another option here like coarse medium fine you can refer the official reference guide to see the difference between all these three options we have obey alpha and invert alpha uh, let's go into the rotor node i'm going to create a circle here and if you check the alpha you can see there's an alpha here so inside the paint tab okay so before doing anything i'm just going to delete this stroke you can select the stroke and delete that here or even you can use this option so this option is just for deleting the paint strokes completely on the current frame a particular work range or all frames so i'm going to delete the paint strokes in the current frame delete everything is gone our paint history is blank uh, if you see here we have an alpha which is coming directly from the rotor node how this alpha is coming into the paint node because i have connected the rotor node into the paint node that's why it is so let's see what is show shapes if i turn on this checkbox you can see the same shape from the rotor node and let's turn on this obey alpha option now if i paint over my plate you can see my paint stroke is getting affected only inside the alpha which is derived from the rotor node so if you have an alpha for an object or a character from the rotor department you can use that as a mask for painting it's that simple so um, control z and if i turn on invert alpha and i'm painting now my paint strokes are getting affected just outside the area where my alpha is here i have alpha source there is a pull down menu for that let's suppose i have another rotor node here and i'm going to connect into the source pipe so inside this rotor node i'm going to draw a square and i'm going to connect this into the plate as well so so here i have a different alpha and uh, inside paint node here in the alpha source if i am choosing source one as my alpha and now i am painting you can see my alpha is changed like that i can connect five different pipes or five different sources for alpha masking and painting this is all about alpha source and there's paint source I think this is a recent update so I haven't got time to see what this does. If you guys are already using it please comment it down. I'll be happy to learn from you guys. Finally we have an option for transform which is going to be a super 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 handy tool for your work. And uh, yeah this is all about this tab and uh, if we see here we have a button right over here that, that takes us directly into the paint preference just for your information. Up here we have a different tab auto paint and inside that we have paint history that means whatever strokes we are drawing over the footage we can see the history of those strokes inside this and we can utilize this history of options for many different kind of tasks or many different kind of techniques so finally we have paint parameters this is basically useful while you output the paint strokes i'm going to delete the current frame let's draw two strokes here so inside the output node if i am going to see the alpha i'm going to disconnect it right now because just want to show you what that does so let's suppose if i'm connecting the output tab into paint only double click on output node you can see in the viewer i have only the area where my paint strokes are if i see there's an alpha as well my alpha is like very solid very hard edgy if i don't want my uh, alpha to be this hard or if i want my alpha just similar to my strokes you can go back to the paint parameters and keep this as soft and just go into the output node now you can see the alpha as soft as your paint strokes now i have explained pretty much all the stuff but i left one important stuff so what presets does is we can select different brushes and tweak the setting and save that brush settings as a preset which we can use in a different shot or a, at a different time so how to do that let's save different presets for different colors and different opacities and different sizes as well so first of all i'm just going to delete this current frame to avoid any confusions here i have selected my color tool and uh, let's select the red color and uh, let's keep the opacity as 100 and maybe size as 300 and uh, yeah uh, pretty much all other stuff are um, same yeah first of all i'm going to draw a stroke here you can see this is red color and the opacity is 100 as well so i'm going to save this as a preset maybe i can rename by double clicking color red at the bottom of this tab you can see there is a plus icon i'm going to click that it just creates preset number two now i'm going to select green uh, let's keep the opacity as uh, 60 and size as maybe 250 or 200 i'm going to draw a stroke here green and uh, let's create another preset let's select this blue color and opacity maybe 20 size maybe maybe 93 blue color you can see opacity is less here name this as color blue okay so we have three presets now if i use shortcut alt one two three or alt zero to nine alt one alt two 
alt 3 you can see the properties are changing as i am selecting different presets alt 1 red 300 red color alt 2 green 260 i'm going to select drag let's create a preset for that drag maybe with value of 50 let's rename this as drag 01 again preset number two uh, let's keep this as 100 now if i select alt 5 you can see we have different settings for the drag tool which we can definitely make use to ease our work yeah so this is all about presets tab and also now if i want to prioritize my drag brushes that means if i want to position drag one on top of this presets tab i can do that as well we can drag this to the top uh, instead i can select the brush and uh, just use this icon you can see now if i select alt 1 alt 1 is my drag brush which has a decay value of 50 and alt 5 is the same drag brush with a decay value of 100 we can lock the parameters as well uh, also there is an option for importing presets and exporting presets and there is an option for clear presets as well so if you made specific presets for a specific project or a specific kind of work you can export that to a colleague or your friend i hope this is going to be super useful in your work in the next tutorial we will learn some of the advanced stuff like creating a clean plate how to do that what all are the tools which we will make you Use for painting a clean plate yeah lots of things to learn so i hope to see you in the next tutorial and as always i hope this tutorial is super useful to you thank you